I think it's been about 12 days since I first started ordering some of the missing Astro gear that we needed for the channel. It's been cloudy every single night. It's just been awful around here. It reminds me why we got out of this in the first place, but this time we have a plan and it's going to have to be a drastic plan. So I'm Chad, this is the Easy Astro Images channel. And we're going to talk about how we're hopefully going to collect more photons in the future. So what's up guys? Yeah, it has been crazy. Uh, luckily the, the clouds and everything and Agena deciding to use like the slowest possible method ever for shipping some of my products. We haven't really had to worry about a whole lot. So it's gave us time to kind of catch up on things. You've seen some processing, playing around with this and that and everything else. We do have a fully set up AM3 now on a peer extension. And we got our uh, 0.67 focal reducer for the six inch RC. This is the Apertura model, which is kind of a newer model than compared to the old GSO and the tele extender type of deal, which will work with cameras a little bit less issues perfect 55 millimeter back focus with this baby so yeah we are uh, pretty much stuck right here in the middle of all of this right here and it's been pretty much the same day after day after day biggest thing though is we made some choices of uh equipment that we are going to be changing of course we are sticking with the rc6 and everything for right now but one of the biggest things that i decided was you know like i really need to go mono and I need it to be easy and also somewhat affordable. So we received the 2600 air and literally put the return sticker on it. And we basically picked up the 533 mono kit here with uh, the, the mini filter wheel with five slots, which I wish I had an eight slot so that way I could throw all of the narrow brand filters in there. Maybe we'll get to that down the road, but we've got RGB and luminance and we'll have one more spot that will probably throw an HA filter in there. A lot of people seem to do in those kind of combinations and that sounds pretty cool, especially for the summer. Now for the summer, we got this bad boy right here. So yep, one of the Sam Yangs and it's the 135 and I think it's going to be great. And I think eventually this could be the kit that ends up going probably to Starfront. I mean, we just have to do it. I can't do this hobby that I love to do and just have this stuff settling around collecting dust because you just can't use it. There's just no other way around it. So sometime this year, we're going to make that happen. That is going to be the lofty goal of this channel. So every purchase that we make from here on out is basically going to be to set up that kind of a rig. So we've got the Wanderer V3 type of power box coming. So that way we can individually power up and down USB ports and our actual 12 volt output ports, things like that, that are really important. So we're going to be getting that all going and, you know, we've already done all the automation here for a you know a long time i mean the last red cat setup was fully automated with like the flat panel and the rotator and all that kind of stuff so i learned a lot of that stuff i operated everything the way that they do with chrome remote desktop dropbox all that kind of stuff from the mini pc to the main pc here so we pretty much have everything all in so the goal is to get everything here get some time under our belt, get it all working, play with the RC6 for a while, and then probably switch over to the same Yang, get it all kind of going, and then kind of figure out if I do want to send that kind of an instrument there, or if I would feel more comfortable sending something like the Red Cat. Now, I really would like to ultimately send a couple, but you know, I mean, you know, this is a parallel universe that i live in sometimes people might agree been looking at stellarium here and just kind of comparing you know going with the 533 sensor to me is not really going to be that huge of a downgrade when you are talking about going deep field and wide and i mean the bigger you go the more problems that you're going to have to deal with locally now the game changes when you go to a dark site because you're going to be actually collecting data out of almost every pixel you're not going to be picking up noise and all this other crap 
But if we look at something like the 533 sensor on the Samyang and we compare it to like the field of view that was on the Red Cat, we have a, we have a bigger field of view than we had before. I was shooting before with a 2600 sensor, of course, which is bigger than the 533, but it comes with all of the added expense and everything else that just goes with it. I mean, it would love to get there one of these days, but it's just such an extraordinary amount of money that I just don't really think that that would be the way to go. Maybe that's like, you know, three or four years down the road. But for now, I mean, this type of field of view with the Samyang, I think is just going to be super awesome. And then of course, you know, with the RC six, we are going to be able to zoom in into those small type of parts and all that stuff with the 533. And I think it's going to work really good because it's going to give this sensor. You just can't go wrong with it. I mean, it's a cut down 571 and it's micro four thirds. So everything just becomes easier to deal with and cheaper. And I think that would be a perfect size. I've, I've seen a couple people online uh, like James from DSO Imager, you know, he sent his small refractor down there with like a 1600 mono and just the results that he have, has got just going from like his Bortle four to the Bortle one skies is amazing. So it's the best telescope upgrade that you could ever do. It's just, do you want to pay that much money per month? So I think that it's going to have to be something that I want to do and it's just going to be worth it. So that's probably where we're going to end up. Hopefully I would say by the end of the year, we'll see how things go. You know, we're never going to be, I'm never going to get bit by the gear bug again. Like I know what gear I need to get and I know like where I want to go. I just need to make the decisions that are right for me and like right for the channel and everything else. And the major decision is having gear in my driveway with a telegizmo cover over it for 300 nights out of the year, you know, just is not fun. It's just not at all. Like I want to like explore projects and do all of this cool stuff. So that's where we are going with that. So we've got like new guide scope, the little guide camera, all that kind of stuff coming, uh, the Astro Denium type of stuff to set up the Samyang rig. It's going to be very difficult to hold my breath and not put it together while, you know, and when everything gets here, because we're going to have the RC six out there collecting stuff for us. Now it doesn't mean that we just can't pop one and pop the other one on and off, but there's a lot of stuff that I need to learn and figure out like filter offsets and focusing and all of that kind of stuff. So we got a lot to learn and a lot to practice and set up before we would take that big next leap by sending stuff to like Starfront. So basically what I've been doing is getting things and sending things back and trying to figure out little things, you know, like this was going to be my guide camera. And now I'm kind of thinking, Hey, this could end up being my mount camera. That would basically show me that my AM three is at home when it is living a thousand miles away. And it's funny because these things are a pretty big chunk of glass. So we're looking at about an 80 millimeter aperture there. When you put your shield on it, you're up to about 95 ish. So you're right there in the middle. Like I see people like deep sky dad and everything else, you know, they all make actual, uh, flat panels to use with these. And with that kit that is, uh, of coming that I got from the Astro Astro needed IDM or whatever. I decided to go with it over some of the other ones that are all out there. I think there's the Hyperpod, uh, basically because it looks like they are just all in on that type of system. I think according to their advertisement, they are on like version six. So they obviously are in the love of the game and trying to constantly improve their product. So we'll put the same Yang back in the box here. When all that stuff gets here, we'll get it all built up and all that stuff. We got a second EAF coming for it. We've got the other one mounted back there on the RC six. So we've got plenty going on and a lot to play with here. And of course we've been playing a lot with Pixinsight and Infinity Photo and all that kind of stuff, just trying to like 
recapture our imagination and trying to get through some old data that really is giving me some fits and upsetting me but I am persistent and that's probably going to be one of the next videos that you see. And I want to get that video, that, that data out there to you guys to see if there's anything else that you guys can actually do to the data. I can't remember how much of it I got. I do plan on keeping way more meticulous logs on everything that we shoot. So that way we're never like in a doubt as far as like which one that we're getting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, by the way, this is the Canon mount lens. So they've got a couple different versions of this. Um, it seems like the Canon is the one that you would want to go with uh, for ZWO cameras. And then they make two adapters, one for larger frame uh, cameras and one for like the micro four thirds type of deals that will take that and your filter wheel. And then you can screw it right onto the camera and you are at 44 millimeters of back focus, which is what is required by the camera and the lens to work perfectly. Um, I've heard that larger frame sensors, you can get some wonky stars on the outside. Obviously with the 533, I've owned that camera a few times in the color version, never owned the monochrome version. I'm super excited to be shooting some RGB guys, like just shooting real color and then adding in some of that stuff. The more back I look through my data, I just see like the lame, like doing their brands type of stuff with the HA and doing the false palettes and all that stuff. And it's so much fun, but like you are just limited so much in like what you can do with your data and being able to have that LRGB type of stuff and then adding again like a hydrogen alpha channel or even an oxygen channel in some cases depending upon what you're shooting is going to be pretty cool I'm pretty excited to get that extra color layer in there if I ever get to use the shit when it gets here because again it's been cloudy for like 12 days I just look at the clear sky, sky charts it's white until like it doesn't go anymore which is I think two or three days so I think everything should technically be here by Wednesday or Thursday of this week and today's Sunday. So we'll see what happens. So that is the big shift and the big changes that we are contemplating here. And that's the way that we are building out these, uh, these systems going forward. So we'll have a little bit of gear showing up that we can go over and then it's going to be right outside, man, collecting some photons. So we will talk to you all later. Peace.